Well, today marks the 75th anniversary of the D-Day invasion on the beaches of Normandy. And early this morning, world leaders, including President Trump, gathered in France to remember and honor those who lost their lives to help liberate Europe. It is a day that we reflect on the service and sacrifice of those young men who stormed the beaches. Some came home and others did not. And there were many from Western New York. Pete Gallivan shares some of their stories. 75 years later, Normandy remains hallowed ground, a land of heroes and sacrifice, where men barely older than boys traveled across an ocean to save the world from tyranny. The reminders are moving and they're everywhere. From the sands of Omaha Beach, where hundreds died in a hail of bullets fired from these bunkers, to the cliffs at Point de Hoc, scaled by army rangers to overtake their enemy high above. The land still scarred from the war waged here. Monuments to Western New York sacrifice dot the landscape as well. This farm at Braycourt Manor is where Tonawanda Skip Muck and his band of brothers in Easy Company helped secure victory by knocking out a crucial German gun battery. But possibly the most moving spot of all is the American Cemetery at Normandy final resting place for 9,387 men who sacrificed themselves for the good of the free world. You can't be human and not realize what, what happened here. These people gave up everything. They gave up their families, they did everything, you know. Two of the most visited graves are that of Robert and Preston Nyland, Tonawanda brothers whose loss inspired the movie Saving Private Ryan. The film opened a path of discovery for the Nyland family. Pete Nyland found out how heroically his uncles died. Bobby Nyland on this spot in Nouvelle Au Plaine, where he sacrificed himself to save a wounded soldier and the medic treating him. Preston was killed by a sniper on this spot near Utah Beach, as the family story goes, trying to save another wounded soldier. And about 20 kilometers away from Utah Beach, near the village of Lafayette, a physical monument stands to Charlie de Glopper. Well, we run into three guys that were in the company Right. And they said, if it wasn't for Charlie, we wouldn't be here today. A soldier from Grand Island who knew the Nylons, De Glopper's unit, came under sniper fire on this road. He jumped in front. It started firing wildly, attracting all the attention and all the bullets to himself. He was the only casualty. Charlie was awarded the Medal of Honor posthumously, and he is also honored in the Airborne Museum in St. Maragliese. A short distance from Lafayette is the hamlet of Gadville, where a young priest was dropped in with his airborne unit. He was probably the only chaplain at that time who was a paratrooper because he wanted to be with his men. Father Ignatius Madernowski, a member of the first graduating class at St. Francis High School, was killed as he tried to negotiate a joint civilian hospital with German officers. And all these years later, Father Madernowski's sacrifice is not forgotten here in Gatville, nor at his alma mater, where the award for the school's top athlete still bears his name. Thank you, Pete. And of course, there are so many stories we have heard of parents and grandparents and others who went overseas and they were really just kids and they quite literally saved the free world. So while we did focus on just a few here, we salute the many Western New Yorkers who went into the eye of a storm 75 years ago today.